As Claire and George slipped into their snorkeling gear, the turquoise waters of the Australian beach glistened invitingly beneath them. The coral reef hidden beneath the surface was a world of wonder, teeming with a colorful array of life that awaited their discovery. They were no strangers to this underwater world, having explored its depths many times before, but each time held the promise of something new and exciting. With a sense of anticipation, they descended into the water, their fins slicing through the gentle waves. As they drew closer to the reef, the suspenseful feeling grew. The coral formations towered above them, casting eerie shadows on the sand below. As they swam deeper into the reef, the shadows grew longer and the colors more vibrant. Schools of fish darted past them, their scales flashing in the sunlight, while crabs and lobsters scuttled along the ocean floor, hiding among the rocks. Despite their familiarity with these waters, the sense of anticipation remained strong within them. The reef was a world of mystery and magic, and they knew that with each new dive, there was always the possibility of discovering something they had never seen before. But then, without warning, Clara was wrenched from her reverie by a sudden excruciating pain in her leg. She gasped, struggling to keep her balance as she looked down, only to see the cold, dead eyes of a massive bull shark staring back at her. Its razor-sharp teeth sank deep into her flesh, tearing and ripping as it thrashed back and forth. The world around her seemed to blur as the pain coursed through her body. She could feel her heart racing as the blood gushed from her wounds, staining the water around her in a sickening cloud of red. The shark seemed relentless, its grip unyielding, as if determined to drag her down into the abyssal depths. Panic and terror threatened to overwhelm her, but Clara fought to stay conscious, knowing that her only chance of survival was to stay focused, to stay alive. She struggled against the powerful jaws of the beast, her body writhing and convulsing as she fought for every breath, every heartbeat. The world had turned into a nightmare, a surreal and terrifying landscape of pain and terror. As the seconds ticked by, Clara's strength began to fade, and she knew that she was fighting a losing battle. But still, she fought on, determined to survive, to live another day, no matter what the cost. A blood-curdling scream escaped Clara's lips as the jaws of the bull shark clamped down on her leg, its teeth sinking deeper into her flesh with every passing second. The pain was unbearable, a searing agony that consumed her entire being. She felt as though she was being torn apart, her body racked with spasms of pain. But even as the shark thrashed around, trying to drag her deeper into the water, Clara felt a strong hand grab her and pull her away. It was George, reacting with lightning speed, his muscles bulging with the effort of hauling her to safety. His grip was iron, his determination unshakable, as he battled against the brute force of the shark. The ocean was in turmoil as the predator and prey battled fiercely in a maelstrom of foam and bubbles. The deafening sound of waves crashing was overshadowed by the thrashing of the shark's tail as it relentlessly pursued Clara and George. Clara felt the rough, abrasive texture of the shark's skin scrape against her leg, sending shivers of terror down her spine. The jaws of the monstrous creature clamped down with a force that threatened to break her bones as she felt the warmth of her own blood spilling into the water. As Clara's vision began to blur and her strength started to wane, she thought it was the end. But then, she felt George's grip tighten around her and his muscles tensed with a sudden burst of energy. He pulled her away from the jaws of death and they hurtled towards the surface as if escaping from the depths of hell itself. Gasping for air, Claire broke through the surface, her chest heaving as she gulped in a great lungful of salty air. She looked around frantically, expecting to see the shark's fin closing in on them at any moment. But to her relief, there was only the sun-drenched sky and the gentle lapping of waves against the shore. It was a narrow escape, but they had survived. And as they lay on the sand, exhausted and shaken, Clara knew that she owed her life to George's bravery and quick thinking.
Claire and George had narrowly escaped with their lives, but the terror of the attack would haunt them forever. From that day on, they never went into the water without a healthy dose of caution, knowing that danger could be lurking just beneath the surface, waiting to strike. The beaches of South Carolina are a sight to behold. The crystal clear water sparkled under the bright sun and the soft sand felt warm and inviting underfoot. The ocean breeze carried with it the scent of salt and sea and the sound of crashing waves provided a soothing background melody. Amidst this idyllic setting, a group of college kids had descended upon the beach for spring break, eager to let loose and have some fun. Andy was one of them, a tall and lanky guy with a mischievous grin and a carefree spirit. He had convinced his friends to rent a small yacht for the day, promising them a day of adventure and excitement. As they sailed further away from the shore, the group cracked open beers and started to let loose. The sun was shining, the water was warm, and the day was theirs for the taking. They joked and laughed, enjoying each other's company and the freedom that came with being young and carefree. But as the alcohol flowed more freely, inhibitions were lowered and the group's sense of judgment became clouded. Someone suggested they dive off the boat and swim around in the deep waters below, daring each other to see who could stay under the longest. Andy was hesitant at first, knowing that the deep waters were home to all kinds of creatures, some of them dangerous. But the peer pressure and the allure of adventure got the better of him. He took a deep breath and plunged into the cool water, the others following suit. For a few moments, it was all laughter and splashing around. But then, out of nowhere, a dark shadow loomed beneath the surface. Andy barely had time to register what was happening before a massive creature revealed itself to Andy and all his friends. To their horror, they met the apex predator of the sea, the great white shark. As Andy struggled in the water, his body thrashing with fear, his eyes locked onto the great white shark's eyes. They were cold and black, filled with a primal hunger that chilled him to the bone. The shark's massive jaws opened wide, revealing row upon row of razor-sharp teeth, each one glinting in the sunlight. Andy's heart pounded in his chest as he fought to stay afloat, but the shark was relentless. Its powerful jaws clamped down on his leg, the teeth sinking deep into his flesh. The pain was excruciating, a white-hot fire that shot through his entire body. The freezing ocean engulfed him, the salt water stinging his eyes and nostrils. He kicked and thrashed, desperate to reach the surface and escape the jaws of the great white. But the shark was relentless, circling him with the precision of a hunter, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Blood seeped into the water from the gash on Andy's leg, a result of the shark's initial assault. The metallic tang of blood filled the water, further inciting the shark's primal instincts. Andy's heart raced as he felt the beast's massive jaws clamp down on his leg, its serrated teeth tearing through flesh and bone like a hot knife through butter. He screamed, the pain unbearable as the shark shook its massive head, trying to rip him apart. Andy's survival instincts kicked in, and he fought back with everything he had. He jabbed at the shark's eyes, desperately trying to pry open its monstrous jaws that were clamped around his leg. The water turned into a crimson hue as blood mixed with seawater, creating a macabre scene. His vision blurred, his strength waning, Andy knew he was in the fight for his life. He mustered every ounce of energy left in him and delivered a powerful punch to the shark's snout. The shark finally released him, its eyes rolling back in momentary shock, giving Andy the opportunity he needed. He propelled himself towards the surface, blood trailing behind him like a grotesque crimson ribbon. His friends on the boat were screaming his name, reaching out for him as he breached the surface, gasping for air. But the shark wasn't done yet. With a final burst of speed, the great white charged at Andy, its massive jaws gaping wide. 
Andy's friends watched in horror as the shark's teeth closed around him, tearing him apart in a gruesome spectacle. Blood sprayed into the air, painting the ocean in a deep shade of red as Andy's body disappeared beneath the surface, consumed by a ravenous predator. The sea calmed, the only evidence of the harrowing ordeal being the blood-stained water, a haunting reminder of the brutal power and unforgiving nature of the great white shark. The rest of the trip was a blur for the group. They made up stories about what had happened to Andy, telling anyone who asked that he had met a girl and decided to stay in South Carolina a while longer. But the guilt weighed heavily on them all, especially as the weeks turned into months and there was still no sign of Andy's body. Evan, a seasoned surfer with 47 years of weave riding under his belt, calls the beautiful Hawaiian Islands his home. The sparkling turquoise waters of Kiwalo, a picturesque surf spot, beckoned him to the sea. He knows this spot well, like an old friend, and feels comfortable navigating the waves that can be both gentle and fierce. The waters of Kiwalo are truly breathtaking, with their crystal clear depths and warm inviting temperatures. They are known to be some of the best in Hawaii, a surfer's paradise, with reliable waves that consistently break on a shallow reef. This shallow reef creates a unique surfing experience, with waves that break evenly and peel perfectly along the shore, providing the perfect canvas for a skilled surfer to carve and glide with grace and ease. One fateful day after catching a few good rides, Evan decided to take a break and rest on his board. He lay on his stomach, letting his legs dangle into the water below. The sea was calm and tranquil, and Evan was content to simply soak in the beauty of the ocean that surrounded him. But suddenly, he felt the sharp and intense pressure on his right leg, as if something had taken a hold of it with tremendous force. At first, he thought it might have been a stray piece of seaweed or wayward rock, but the pain quickly intensified, and he knew something was wrong. He looked down and saw a large dark shape moving quickly beneath him, its jaws clamped tightly around his leg. In that moment, Evan realized he had encountered a tiger shark. He could feel the raw power of the creature as it thrashed about, dragging him and his board through the water. Fear and adrenaline coursed through his veins as he struggled to stay afloat and keep his wits about him. As Evan struggled to stay afloat and fend off the powerful shark that had latched onto his leg, his mind raced with fear and uncertainty. But even in the midst of this terrifying ordeal, Evan was surprised to find himself instinctively turning to prayer. His thoughts turned to a higher power, and he began to silently ask for help and guidance. But this was not a prayer of supplication or pleading for his life. Evan was a seasoned surfer and had faced many challenges in his life, and he felt a fierce determination rise within him. Instead of asking for mercy, he prayed for strength and courage to fight back against the shark. Evan's body surged with adrenaline as he continued to battle the shark with all his might. He punched and thrashed against the creature each blow fueled by a primal instinct to survive. His fellow surfers heard his shouts and swearing and paddled towards him, but the struggle persisted. The shark was relentless, refusing to let go of Evan's leg, even as he punched and kicked with all his might. As the battle raged on, Evan felt a sudden jerk and was pulled beneath the waves. He was dragged into the deep, murky water, the weight of the ocean pressing down on him. But even as he was swallowed by the darkness, Evan refused to give up. He kept fighting, his adrenaline surging, and drowning out the excruciating pain in his mangled leg. Desperate to survive, Evan mustered all his strength and wrapped his arms around the massive shark, squeezing it in a bear hug. His heart pounding with fear and adrenaline, he reached for the shark's gills, his fingers digging into the soft flesh. With every punch and claw, Evan felt the shark's body convulse with pain. He could hear the creature's labored breaths, its thrashing becoming more and more erratic. And then suddenly, he felt the shark's jaws loosen its grip on his leg. 
Evan didn't waste a second. With a surge of energy, he pushed away from the shark and kicked towards the surface, his lungs burning for air. As he emerged from the water, gasping and coughing, he looked down and saw the massive creature disappearing into the depths below. Evan's friends sprang into action, their hearts heavy with concern, as they saw him struggling in the water. They paddled towards him as fast as they could, and with practiced ease, lifted him onto one of their longboards. As they made their way back to shore, they worked frantically to staunch the bleeding from Evan's leg. Some of them used their board leashes to create a makeshift tourniquet, their hands slick with Evan's blood. Through it all, Evan remained conscious, his mind racing with a mix of pain, fear, and determination. At one point, he mustered the strength to look down at his leg and was shocked to see only bone where his ankle and foot used to be. Despite the agony, Evan knew that he had to keep fighting. He gritted his teeth as the doctors rushed him into surgery, his body racked with pain as they amputated his right foot. But through it all, Evan never lost his spirit. He was a survivor, and he knew that he had been given a second chance at life. Laura was an internationally renowned bikini model whose breathtaking beauty and fearless attitude had taken her to some of the most remote and exotic places on the planet. But even for someone like her, there was nothing quite like the breathtaking mix of beauty and danger found in Shark Ray Alley, a stretch of crystal clear waters off the coast of Belize. The azure waters of the Caribbean Sea glimmered under the scorching sun, illuminating the vibrant corals and tropical fish that swam within. But beneath the surface, the true highlight of Shark Ray Alley was something else, the sharks. The nurse sharks were a sight to behold with their smooth gray skin and majestic presence. These creatures were known for their gentle and serene demeanor, making them a popular choice for photo shoots. Laura had swam with them previously, and she felt completely at ease with her company. The way they glided through the water with effortless grace, their inquisitive eyes following her every move, made for an unforgettable experience. As the photo shoot was going smoothly and the crew was well ahead of schedule, Laura decided to take a dip in the tranquil waters, feeling the sun's warmth on her skin. The nurse sharks gracefully circled around her as if performing an elegant ballet, creating a serene and peaceful atmosphere. Laura felt at ease as she moved through the clear turquoise water, admiring the vibrant coral and fish beneath her. It was a moment of pure bliss, a temporary escape from the chaos of the world. She was so confident in the docile nature of the nurse sharks that she let her guard down, unaware of the ominous presence lurking just beyond her vision. The tranquility of Shark Ray Alley was shattered in an instant. The water that was once so calm turned into a bloody red frenzy. Laura's serene swim turned into a nightmare as she felt an excruciating pain ripped through her leg, like hot iron searing her flesh. When she looked down, her worst fears were realized. A bull shark had sunk its razor-sharp teeth into her skin, intent on dragging her deeper into the abyss. The predator's eyes burned with fierce hunger, its jaws clamping down tighter and tighter, as if nothing would stop it from its desired meal. The agony was beyond words and every movement felt like a struggle against death itself. Laura's screams became choked gasps as she felt herself being dragged into the abyss of the water, her body twisting and contorting as she tried to break free from the shark's vice-like grip. She could feel the water pressure building around her, suffocating her as she struggled to breathe. The bull shark's eyes were fixated on her, its razor-sharp teeth cutting into her flesh like hot knives through butter. Laura could feel her flesh ripping apart from the attacks of this primal predator. The crystal clear waters of Shark Ray Alley were now transformed into a murky, bloody nightmare. The serene atmosphere was replaced with terror and chaos as Laura's struggles intensified. Her body convulsed with agony as the bull shark continued its merciless attack. Its jaws were clamped down on her leg pulling her deeper and deeper into the abyss. Laura's vision blurred, and the sound of her own frantic breathing 
became muffled as the water consumed her. Every second felt like an eternity, and the shark's grip showed no signs of relenting. With her strength fading and the shark's grip tightening, Lara's heart sank. She knew it was only a matter of time before the predator would deliver the final blow. But in a last-ditch effort, she mustered up her energy and kicked out at the bull shark's sensitive snout. The impact jolted the predator, causing it to recoil momentarily. For a fleeting moment, Lara felt a glimmer of hope. The tension in the water was palpable as Lara gasped for air, her heart racing with fear. She knew that the bull shark was still lurking somewhere in the depths below, biding its time before striking again. The quiet stillness of the ocean was shattered by the sounds of her ragged breathing, the only thing standing between her and the ruthless predator. Lara braced herself for the inevitable, knowing that the next attack could be fatal. Lara desperately dragged herself through the water, her injured leg throbbing with every movement. The once calm sea around her now felt like a death trap as she sensed the shark's presence closing in on her. She could hear the creature's powerful strokes through the water, its sharp senses locked onto her scent. Lara's heart raced as she realized the futility of her efforts. The shark was coming for her, and there was nothing she could do to escape. She stopped moving and closed her eyes, steeling herself for the inevitable attack. Suddenly, a massive shadow eclipsed the sun, and Lara's eyes flew open, just in time to see the shark launch itself out of the water. Its body was a blur of sleek, muscular power, its jaws wide open to reveal a terrifying arsenal of teeth. The shark was a force of nature, beautiful in its deadly grace. The jaws of the monstrous shark were only inches away from Lara's face when a sharp object pierced through the predator's open mouth, causing it to let out a piercing screech. The spear gun had landed with a resounding thud and with one swift motion had claimed the life of the frenzied beast. The water was stained with blood of both predator and prey, and the lifeless body of the shark bobbed up and down in the waves, a stark contrast to its former fearsome form. Lara's body went limp, her mind unable to process what just happened. She floated in the water like a lifeless doll, her eyes staring blankly at the red-stained waves around her. Suddenly, a pair of strong hands gripped her shoulders, pulling her back to reality. It was Johnny, the cameraman, who had saved her from the jaws of death. He hoisted Lara onto the boat, her body shivering from the shock. The sound of the shot that killed the shark echoed in her ears, and she knew that she owed her life to Johnny's quick thinking. However, the memory of the terrifying incident would haunt her for the rest of her days, a reminder of the fragility of life in the wild. Francis has seen it all, the stunning views of the San Francisco Bay Area, the captivating skyline of San Francisco, and the eerie sight of Alcatraz Island looming in the middle of the water. He had been a boat operator for the Alcatraz Island tours for a decade now, and yet he never got tired of the sight of the bay and the island. The day had started like any other. Francis had picked up a group of tourists from San Francisco Bay and brought them to Alcatraz Island for the prison tour. After the tour was over, Francis was waiting for the tourists to return so he could take them back to the bay. But something caught his eye. The calm waters around the island seemed to call out to him, and without any particular reason, he decided to take the boat for a trip around the island. The situation turned dire when the vessel's engine suddenly faltered, refusing to restart. Left stranded in the frigid waters near the island, Francis attempted to call for assistance, but was informed that it could be a considerable amount of time before a tugboat would arrive to aid him. With no means of propulsion and an uncertain weight ahead, he found himself in a precarious predicament. As Francis sat there waiting for the tugboat to rescue him and his stranded vessel, he couldn't help but feel restless. Something was nagging at him, like a persistent itch that he couldn't scratch. Suddenly, he remembered the acrid scent of smoke that had filled his nostrils earlier, emanating from the engine room. 
His curiosity piqued, he made his way to the aft of the boat, gingerly leaning over the edge of the deck to peer into the mechanical abyss below. It was then in that vulnerable position that fate decided to strike its cruel hand. Before Francis could react, a monstrous figure emerged from the depths of the frigid waters surrounding the boat. It was a behemoth of the sea, a great white shark, with jaws wide open and rows of serrated teeth glistening in the sunlight. With ferocious speed, it lunged at Francis, sinking its teeth into his shoulder with a bone-crushing force. A blood-curdling scream escaped Francis' lips as searing pain shot through his body. He felt as if his flesh was being torn apart, the shark's teeth slicing through his skin like a hot knife through butter. Blood poured out from the wound, mingling with the salty waters of the San Francisco Bay, staining the once calm surface a deep crimson. Francis thrashed and writhed, desperately trying to free himself from the jaws of the predator. But the shark's grip was relentless, its teeth sinking deeper into his shoulder with each thrash and pull. The excruciating pain was overwhelming, and Francis could feel his strength ebbing away replaced by a numbing sensation as blood loss took its toll. As the water closed in around him, Francis realized he was in a fight for his life. He tried to fend off the shark with his free hand, desperately striking its sleek body, but it seemed impervious to his feeble attempts. The shark's thrashing movements only served to drag Francis further away from the safety of the boat deeper into the icy waters of the bay. Francis felt a sense of hopelessness creeping over him. His body grew weak and his vision blurred. He knew he was running out of time. But then, a surge of determination coursed through him, fueled by a primal instinct to survive. Summoning every ounce of strength he had, Francis reached out with his free hand and groped for the shark's eye. With a primal roar of pain and determination, Francis mustered every bit of strength he had to hold on to the shark's eye, feeling its squirming body thrash and writhe in agony beneath him. His grip was unrelenting, his fingers digging into the soft flesh of the predator's eye as he clung to life with every fiber of his being. The shark, shocked by the sudden attack, momentarily let go of Francis' shoulder, giving him the chance he needed to pull himself away from its razor-sharp teeth. Francis felt a searing pain rip through his flesh as he tore himself free. His shoulder and arm mangled beyond recognition. But he refused to give up even as the water around him turned crimson with his own blood. He knew that his only chance of survival was to fight back with everything he had. With a primal scream of defiance, Francis kicked the shark's nose with all his might, feeling the force of the impact reverberate through his entire body. The shark, stunned and in pain, swam away in a sudden burst of speed, disappearing into the murky depths. Francis was left floating in the water, bleeding and battered, but alive. He knew he couldn't make it back to the boat on his own, but he refused to give up. With a flicker of hope, he looked towards the horizon, desperately scanning for any signs of rescue. And then, like a beacon of hope, a tugboat appeared on the horizon, rushing towards him. It was the backup he had called for earlier. Francis felt a surge of relief and gratitude as he was pulled out of the water and onto the safety of the tugboat. He was whisked away to the hospital, where he received urgent medical attention for his severe injuries. Despite the devastating loss of his left shoulder, arm, and hand, Francis emerged from his encounter with a great white shark as a living testament to resilience and survival. His body bore the scars of the harrowing ordeal, a reminder of the ferocity of nature's predators. The sun shone brilliantly over Lake Nicaragua, casting a golden glow on the water's surface as John and Katie Thomas, a newlywed couple from Ontario, Canada, embarked on their honeymoon adventure. They had chosen Nicaragua for its tropical paradise, seeking a break from the blistering cold of their home country. As they boarded a boat for a tour around the lake, their excitement grew, and they were mesmerized by the breathtaking scenery surrounding them. 
the lush greenery of the surrounding landscape, the tranquil waters of the lake, and the gentle breeze rustling through the trees created a serene atmosphere. The boat glided smoothly through the water as the couple marveled at the beauty of their surroundings. The boat glided to a halt, and the couple wasted no time in plunging into the mysterious depths of Lake Nicaragua. Their excitement was palpable as they explored the unknown realm beneath the surface, their eyes wide with wonder. The vibrant marine life welcomed them, with colorful fish darting and swirling around them and coral swaying with otherworldly gardens. But as they ventured deeper, the water grew darker, and an uneasy feeling crept over them. Katie's senses sharpened as she noticed a foreboding shape lurking in the murky abyss below. Her heart skipped a beat as she squinted, trying to discern its identity, but it vanished before her eyes. The tension in the water was palpable, and a sense of mystery hung in the air, sending shivers down their spines. What could it have been? The couple exchanged nervous glances. Their curiosity peaked, and a sense of trepidation gnawed at them as they continued to explore the enigmatic underwater world, wary of what other secrets it might hold. Little did they know, a colossal bull shark had been silently lurking in the unfathomable depths of the lake, keenly observing their every move. Drawn by the commotion caused by the boat, the predator had been stealthily closing in, patiently biding its time. John, unknowingly separated from Katie, found himself alone in the water, vulnerable and oblivious to the impending danger. With a sudden bone-chilling jolt, a fin sliced through the surface, sending ripples of fear through the air. The massive shark circled closer, its predatory instincts kicking into high gear. Its eyes glimmered with primal fear as it homed in on its prey. The water seemed to thicken with tension as the shark's sleek form glided sinuously through the shadows, circling John with calculated precision. The atmosphere was suffused with palpable suspense as the shark closed the distance, its dark eyes fixed on its unsuspecting target, ready to strike at any moment. The couple's idyllic swim had turned into a heart-stopping battle for survival. As John remained oblivious to the deadly predator lurking just beneath the surface, poised to unleash its primal power. Katie's heart skipped a beat as she realized the danger that her husband was in. She screamed, trying to warn John of the impending attack, but it was too late. In a split second, the bull shark shot out from under the water like a torpedo, its jaws clamping down on John's leg with brutal force. John cried out in agony as the shark thrashed, mauling him in a frenzy. Katie's screams echoed across the lake, alerting their guide, who was still on the boat. He sprang into action, grabbing a spear gun and a knife, and leapt into the water to rescue John. The water turned into a swirling vortex of blood and water as the shark continued its attack, tearing through John's flesh mercilessly. Katie could only watch in horror, paralyzed by fear. With adrenaline coursing through his veins, the guide deftly made his way towards John and the ferocious shark, his mind racing with urgency. As he closed in, he took a deep breath, steadying his nerves, and with one swift motion, thrust his spear gun into the side of the frenzied predator. The shark recoiled, its jaws tightening around John's body unwilling to let go of its prey. Undeterred, the guide charged forward, his knife glinting menacingly in the murky water. With each frenzied stab, he fought with all his might, plunging his blade into the beast's belly in a desperate bid to free John from its relentless grip. The water boiled with tension as the predator thrashed and writhed, its primal instincts driving it to fight until the bitter end. The struggle was fierce, and the outcome uncertain, as the guide fought tooth and nail to save John from certain doom. The water seemed to tremble with the ferocity of the battle, the guide's frantic movements illuminated by the glimmering light of the underwater world. But with each passing second, 
The guide's efforts paid off, and the shark's grip on John began to loosen. The atmosphere was charged with nail-biting suspense as the guide valiantly battled the predator, fighting for the lives of those in his care. Minutes felt like an eternity as John endured the excruciating pain of the shark's attack. His vision blurred, and he felt his strength fading. Katie's cry spurred the guide to fight even harder, determined to save John. At last, the bull shark succumbed to its injuries, and with one final stab from the guide's knife, it released John and retreated into the depths of the lake. The guide swiftly pulled John's limp body towards the boat, leaving a trail of blood. Katie's emotions were a mix of relief and horror as she saw her husband's mangled leg, but she was grateful he was alive. They rushed to the hospital, where John underwent emergency surgery, resulting in the amputation of his leg to save his life. Despite the tragedy, John and Katie's love for each other only grew stronger. They learned to cherish every moment, living life to the fullest, and never taking anything for granted. Diana's heart raced as she gulped out a lungful of salty air, trying to quell the mounting unease that twisted her stomach into knots. The yacht bobbed and weaved with the lapping waves, as if daring her to succumb to the sea's unpredictable whims. The sun's fiery descent cast an amber light over the teak deck, illuminating the faces of the revelers with a warm, inviting glow. Diana could hear the laughter and music drifting in the breeze, a siren song tempting her to join the merrymaking. But as much as she longed to let loose and celebrate her friend's nuptials, the water beneath her feet stirred a primal fear deep within her. Diana finally let herself unwind, basking in the warm glow of camaraderie and good cheer. The savory aroma of succulent cuisine mingled with a heady scent of alcohol, creating a heady elixir that lifted her spirits higher with each sip. The lapping of the waves against the hull of the yacht provided a piece of soothing background music, lulling her into a sense of calm. But just as she settled into her blissful state, the world turned upside down. A deafening crash shook the vessel violently, sending Diana hurtling towards the edge. The floor heaved beneath her feet. Before she knew it, she was plunging into a frigid abyss. The icy waters engulfed her, and she felt her breath leave her in a gasp. A terrifying presence became known as she thrashed around disoriented and panicking. In the inky blackness she saw it, a monstrous shape materialized from the depths. A sleek, massive, great white shark with rows of razor-sharp teeth glinting in the pale moonlight. It circled around her, a predator sizing its prey with cold, calculating eyes. Diana's heart pounded with terror as she struggled to propel herself towards the yacht, her limbs flailing wildly in the inky depths. But her desperate bid for survival was thwarted by the sinewy shadow that streaked towards her with deadly speed. The great white shark surged in front of her, cutting off her escape with the sheer power of its presence. Diana's throat tightened with a primal fear that threatened to choke her as she spun around and bolted in the opposite direction. She could hear the thump of her own heart echoing in her ears, mingled with the sound of the shark's relentless pursuit. The predator's jaws loomed ever closer, a glimmering row of razor-sharp teeth reflecting the pale moonlight in a sinister dream. Diana's mind raced with frantic thoughts, knowing she had to outsmart the shark to survive. Diana's survival instincts kicked into overdrive, compelling her to fight back against the monstrous creature that had threatened to claim her life. She punched the shark with a flurry of desperate blows, lashing out with her fist and feet to fend off the relentless predator. But the more she fought, the more the shark's aggression grew, fueled by the primal instinct to hunt and kill. Then, with lightning speed, the shark lunged forward and sank its razor-sharp teeth into Diana's arm, severing it from her body in a sickening crunch. Diana's anguished scream echoed through the night, mingling with the sound of the churning waves and the roar of a predatory beast. 
Her blood stained the water a deep crimson, a macabre dance of life and death unfolding in the icky depths. Her friends watched in mute horror, their eyes wide with disbelief and terror. They were powerless to intervene to save their beloved friend from the jaws of the ruthless predator. Diana's fate hung in the balance, a cruel reminder of the savage, unforgiving nature of the sea. The captain tried to shoot the shark with a harpoon, but it was useless. The shark was determined to prey on Diana. After biting off her arm, the shark retreated temporarily to the depths of the sea with Diana's severed limb. Diana was in agony, her blood mixing with the cold, salty water. She tried to swim back to the boat, but her injury made it impossible to move quickly. She was getting closer to the life buoy thrown by her friends, and as it was almost within reach, the shark launched another attack from the bottom of the sea, devouring the lower half of Diana's body. The attack was so sudden and powerful that the shark sprang out of the water with Diana in its mouth. The upper half of her lifeless body, from her torso to her head, was visible as the crew saw the terror on Diana's face. Then, as suddenly as it had attacked, the shark made a massive splash as it returned to the water, dragging Diana to the depths of the sea. And suddenly, a deafening silence engulfed the sea. All that was left was a pool of blood in churning water as the great white shark tore Diana limb from limb, devouring her at the bottom of the ocean. All the people on the yacht were in shock. They reported the incident to the local authorities upon reaching dry land. In response, a thorough search was conducted, but no remains of Diana ever surfaced. The tragic incident has shaken everyone at the wedding party, and the memory of Diana's horrifying death haunted them for years to come. Once a beautiful and serene backdrop to their celebration, the ocean had become a terrifying reminder of the dangers that lurk beneath the surface. Ayumi stood in awe at the edge of the colossal aquarium, her eyes fixated on the crystal clear waters that housed the awe-inspiring great white shark she had been observing for more than a year. The shark research facility in Japan was a marvel of modern science, a cutting-edge facility built to study and unravel the mysteries of these formidable apex predators. Ayumi herself was a respected figure in the world of shark research, known far and wide for her unwavering dedication and unparalleled passion in studying these enigmatic creatures. Her heart swelled with excitement as she prepared to embark on yet another day of unraveling the secrets of the deep, eager to immerse herself in the world of the great white shark once again. The facility was buzzing with activity as Ayumi prepared her daily observation session. She put on her diving gear, adjusted her goggles, and took a deep breath. The water was chilly as she descended into the aquarium, surrounded by the tranquil beauty of the underwater world. The great white shark, named Kuro, gracefully glided through the water, its sleek body a picture of power and grace. Ayumi had developed a special bond with Kuro during her time at the research facility. She has spent countless hours observing and documenting Kuro's behavior and had grown to respect and admire the creature's beauty and strength. But today, something was off. Kuro was behaving unusually, swimming faster than usual and bumping into walls of the aquarium with force. Ayumi furrowed her brow in concern as she observed Kuro's erratic behavior. She had never seen Kuro act like this before and it sent a shiver down her spine. She decided to wrap up her observation and started making her way towards the surface. But before she could reach the top, Kuro suddenly changed direction and started circling her, its large black eyes fixed on her with an intensity that made her heart skip a beat. Ayumi's heart pounded in her chest as she realized the danger she was in. She tried to swim away from Kuro, but the shark was relentless in its pursuit. It circled closer and closer its powerful body cutting through the water with alarming speed. Ayumi's mind raced as she desperately tried to come up with a plan to escape the shark's deadly jaws. Before Ayumi could react, 
It happened. In a heart-stopping moment, Kuro charged at her with astonishing speed, a blur of sleek muscle and razor-sharp teeth. Ayumi was caught off guard, unable to evade the massive predator in time. With a bone-crushing impact, Kuro slammed into her, pinning her against the unforgiving glass wall of the aquarium. Ayumi's head struck the glass, a sickening thun echoing through the air, and warm blood oozed down her face, mixing with the salt water. The metallic scent of blood seemed to trigger a primal instinct in Kuro, as the once graceful shark now transformed into a frenzied beast. Thrashing violently in the water, jaws snapping dangerously close, Kuro's eyes were filled with a predatory's madness as Ayumi found herself trapped and at the mercy of a creature she had spent her life studying. Desperation surged through Ayumi as she realized the gravity of her situation. With adrenaline coursing through her veins, she kicked and thrashed, desperately trying to free herself from Kuro's jaws. But the shark's immense power was overwhelming. She felt the sharp pain of teeth sinking into her flesh, tearing her limbs apart one by one. Blood clouded the water around her, staining it a murky red as Kuro tore into her with savage ferocity. Ayumi's screams were muffled by the water, her frantic movements fueled by sheer survival instinct. She fought with every ounce of strength she had left, her body writhing in agony as she refused to succumb to the relentless assault of the creature she had once studied, determined to cling to life until her very last breath. Amidst the chaos, one of the researchers caught wind of the commotion and immediately alerted the rest of the team. A rescue crew scrambled to the scene, but what they encountered left them paralyzed with shock. A ghastly scene before them was one of sheer horror. Ayumi's lifeless body bobbing in the water, her eyes frozen in a look of terror. Kuro was still in a frenzy, thrashing wildly and ripping chunks of flesh from Ayumi's body with a ferocity that defied belief. With a burst of speed, the shark launched itself out of the water and in one fluid motion devoured Ayumi's mangled remains in a gruesome display of savagery. The crew watched in disbelief and horror as the water swirled in a vortex of water, flesh, and blood. And just like that, Kuro disappeared into the depths, dragging Ayumi's tattered corpse behind it. After the initial shock of the attack, the rescue crew managed to gather themselves and quickly drain the aquarium water, revealing the grisly aftermath of Kuro's frenzy. Ayumi's once vibrant body had been brutally torn apart by the shark, and only her head remained, lifeless and rolling at the bottom of the tank. The scene was a gruesome sight to behold, one that left an indelible mark on the minds of all who witnessed it. The once bustling shark research center now stood silent and empty, a solemn monument to the tragedy that had occurred within its walls. Even Kuro, the culprit behind the attack, met a tragic end. His life cut short by the consequences of his deadly actions. Euthanized as a result of the attack, Kuro's fate was a stark reminder of the high stakes and risk involved in the pursuit of scientific knowledge. The loss of Ayumi, a dedicated and passionate shark researcher, left an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of those who knew her. Her colleagues were haunted by the gruesome image of her body being torn apart by the very creature she had devoted her life to studying. A reminder of the savage nature of these apex predators. Sarah and Jake couldn't wait to begin their thrilling expedition into the Pacific Ocean, off the coast of Hawaii. As they set out, the bright sun sparkled on the tranquil water, luring them in with its gentle waves. With their hearts racing and adrenaline pumping, they were ready to uncover the mysteries of the powerful and mysterious sharks that prowled these waters. Every detail of their gear had been meticulously checked and double-checked to ensure their safety, and they were eager to put it to the test. Their eyes locked onto the deep blue sea, searching for any signs of their elusive prey. As they drifted further and further from the safety of the shore, 
a sense of unease crept over them. They knew the dangers of the deep, but their excitement overpowered any fear. They tried to tag as many sharks as possible, and nothing would stand in their way. As they submerged themselves into the cool, clear water, Sarah's heart pounded excitedly as she spotted that magnificent oceanic white-tipped shark gliding effortlessly through the depths. With a flick of its powerful tail, it disappeared into the blue expanse before them. Without hesitation, Sarah signaled Jake to follow, but Jake signaled Sarah to stop the pursuit. Jake felt unease emanating from the shark's erratic behavior. Jake thought Sarah obliged his instruction to return to the boat, but Sarah was determined to get closer to the shark. The shark's sleek body glistened in the sun's rays, and Sarah was entranced by its deadly grace. The closer she got, the more she could feel the primal energy emanating from the predator. Jake frantically waved his arms, signaling Sarah to return to the boat's safety. But Sarah was entranced by the shark's hypnotic movements, lost in the wild beauty of the predator. Her fascination with the creature proved to be a fatal mistake. The shark launched towards Sarah with lightning-fast speed, its jaws gaping wide. Before she could scream, the predator clamped down hard on her leg, yanking her beneath the water's surface. The force of the bite was like nothing Sarah had ever experienced before. The shark's teeth sliced through her wetsuit, and she could feel the piercing pain in her leg, signaling the beginning of a terrifying fight for survival. As the water grew murky and dark, Sarah struggled to break free from the powerful grip of the shark's jaws. But the predator was too strong, its hold unrelenting. It dragged her deeper and deeper into the abyss, and Sarah knew that her chances of survival were slim at best. Her heart racing, her lungs burning, she fought with all of her might against the relentless force that threatened to claim her life. Jake saw the horrifying scene take place before his eyes. He knew he had to act fast if he intended to save Sarah. Jake's heart pounded with fear and adrenaline as he swam closer to the attack scene. The water was murky and filled with bubbles, making it difficult to see what was happening. He could hear Sarah's muffled screams and knew that time was running out. He pushed himself harder, his arms and legs pumping with all the strength he could muster. As he got closer, he saw the full horror of the situation. The shark's razor-sharp teeth were dug deep into Sarah's mangled leg, and blood was gushing like a river. She fought with all her might, but the predator's grip was too strong. Jake knew he had to act fast or Sarah would be lost forever. Without hesitation, he lunged at the shark, grabbing its dorsal fin with all his might. The shark thrashed and jerked, trying to shake Jake off, but he held tight. He could feel the immense power of the predator beneath him, and his heart pounded in his chest as he struggled to keep his grip. Finally, with a burst of strength, Jake hit the shark's snout, shocking it with a jolt of pain forcing its mouth open and freeing Sarah's leg. The shark recoiled and temporarily retreated to the depths of the sea. Jake and Sarah took this opportunity and immediately approached the waiting boat, leaving a trail of blood in their wake. Sarah's leg was gruesome, blood gushing out from the wound and staining the water around them. With every move, Sarah could feel the pain throbbing through her entire body, making lifting her leg hard but Jake knew he couldn't waste any time. He quickly took out his first aid kit and tied a tourniquet tightly around Sarah's leg, hoping to stem the bleeding. The tension in the air was palpable as the shark continued to circle the boat, waiting for its chance to attack again. Every breath was a struggle, and Sarah could feel her heart pounding against her chest as she struggled to stay conscious. The sound of the shark's fin slicing through the water sent shivers down their spines, and they knew they had to act quickly to return to shore. As they sped back to shore, Sarah felt relieved knowing she had survived a deadly attack by one of the ocean's most notorious predators. She couldn't stop thinking about the shark and how close she came to losing her life. 
When they arrived back on land, Sarah was rushed to the hospital, receiving medical attention for her wounds. She knew she would never forget the experience and always had a newfound respect for the power of the ocean and its inhabitants. From that day on, Sarah and Jake continued their research on shark behavior, but this time, they made sure to always be aware of their surroundings and respect the power of these magnificent creatures. The sun shone down on the pristine waters of Monterey Bay, casting a warm glow on the tranquil scene below. The gentle waves lapped against the shore, creating a soothing soundtrack to the picturesque landscape. The clear blue sky stretched out above, inviting anyone to venture out into the endless expanse of the ocean. It was a day that begged to be enjoyed, a day that whispered promises of adventure and relaxation. For Andrew, this is a perfect day to go for a swim. Andrew was a skilled swimmer and diver whose love for the ocean was insatiable. He could spend hours floating in the salty waters, basking in the warmth of the sun and reveling in the coolness of the ocean's embrace. His movements in the water were effortless as he glided through the calm and clear waters of Monterey Bay, feeling the weightlessness of his body and the freedom of his spirit. Today was no different as he set out for a leisurely swim, taking in the beauty and serenity of the world beneath the waves. Andrew was entranced by the serene beauty of the ocean as he swam further out, lulled by the gentle rhythm of the waves. The shimmering blue water enveloped him, creating a sense of tranquility and calm. The deeper he ventured, the more the world above the surface receded into a distant memory. But just as quickly as he had been entranced, Andrew was snapped out of his reverie by a sharp, piercing pain that coursed through his body. It felt like a red-hot poker had been thrust through his thighs and was now making its way up towards his abdomen. His breaths became ragged gasps as he tried to make sense of what was happening. Andrew's mind raced as he tried to comprehend the situation he was in. He had heard stories about sharks attacking swimmers, but he never thought he would be the one to experience it. The pain was excruciating, and he knew he was in serious trouble. Looking down, he saw the unmistakable silhouette of a great white shark. Its jaws clamped tightly on his body, and he felt its teeth sinking deeper into his flesh. The shark's strength was immense, and it was trying to drag him down into the murky depths of the ocean. Andrew's survival instincts kicked in as he began to thrash and fight against the shark's grip. His muscles burned with exertion as he struggled to free himself from the predator's grasp. But the shark was relentless, determined to drag him to the bottom of the sea. Andrew's body went into shock as he felt the immense pain of the predator's bite, but his survival instincts kept him conscious. The vicious shark had mistaken him for its prey, and its razor-sharp teeth shredded through Andrew's flesh. The once calm waters were now stained with the deep red of his blood, sending a sickening feeling through his body. The massive shark refused to let go of Andrew's body, thrashing and churning through the water with a ferocity that could only be fueled by primal hunger. Andrew's screams were drowned out by the sound of the waves crashing against the shore as he fought for his life. The relentless predator's thrashing only made the wounds on Andrew's body worse. He felt as though his body was being ripped apart piece by piece. Adrenaline continued to surge through his veins, keeping him from passing out, but he knew that he couldn't hold on forever. Andrew was on the brink of losing consciousness when he felt a sudden release of pressure from his body. He gasped for air feeling the stinging sensation of salt water seeping into his wounds. The water around him was a gruesome shade of red, a stark contrast to the serene blue it once was. The shark had released him, but Andrew knew that he was not out of danger yet. As Andrew gasped for air, trying to keep his head above water, he saw the unmistakable shape of the great white shark closing in on him once again the predator's dorsal fin slicing through the water like a knife, creating a chilling wake behind it. 
Andrew's heart pounded in his chest as he realized the shark was making another attempt to attack him. Andrew's survival instincts kicked in as he lashed out at the monstrous predator with all his might. Every push and kick was fueled by his fear and determination to stay alive. The shark recoiled, surprised by the sudden attack, and retreated to the dark abyss below. Andrew's mind raced as he struggled to stay afloat, his senses on high alert for any sign of the relentless predator. Despite his fear and pain, Andrew refused to give up. He mustered all the strength he had left to try and make his way back to the shore, but his mangled thighs and abdomen screamed in agony with each movement. He knew that time was running out, and the thought of the shark lurking just below the surface sent shivers down his spine. Fortune was on Andrew's side as a band of paddleboarders caught sight of his distress and sprang to his rescue. Without hesitation, they hoisted him onto their paddleboard, determined to bring him safely back to shore. Andrew clung to the board with all his might, wincing in pain as the salty spray of the ocean stung his wounds. Finally, they reached the shore, where a group of bystanders rushed to help them pull Andrew from the board and onto the sand. Andrew was quickly whisked away to the hospital, where doctors worked tirelessly to save his life. Despite the trauma he had endured, Andrew survived the shark attack and emerged from the hospital a changed man, forever humbled by the immense power and danger of the ocean. His story served as a cautionary tale for anyone who dared to underestimate the forces of nature. Since he was a child, Ryan was captivated by the mystery and wonder of the ocean. As he grew older, his fascination only deepened especially when it came to the creatures that call the underwater world their home. He was mesmerized by their power, grace, and raw beauty, and he wanted to share their magnificence with the world. Ryan became a skilled underwater photographer, always on the lookout for that perfect shot that would capture the essence of the ocean's predators. He spent countless hours studying their behavior and movements, observing their hunting strategies, and waiting patiently for the right moment to snap a photo. He dove deep into the ocean, braving the dark and the cold, determined to capture the elusive creatures on film. That's why Ryan's heart raced with excitement when he heard about the upcoming international competition for underwater photography. He knew that this was the perfect opportunity to showcase his skills and passion for capturing the stunning beauty of the underwater world. To prepare for the competition, Ryan searched far and wide for the ideal location that would give him the edge he needed to win. His search led him to the mesmerizing waters of Tiger Beach in the Bahamas, a place that offered both breathtaking scenery and the chance to capture stunning shots of one of the ocean's most awe-inspiring predators, the tiger shark. As Ryan arrived in Tiger Beach, he was struck by the stunning beauty of the place. He spent several days getting familiar with the area, marveling at the incredible underwater world that surrounded him. The turquoise waters were crystal clear, revealing a world of wonder and mystery beneath the surface. As he dived deeper into the water, Ryan was greeted by schools of brightly colored fish that darted playfully around him. The vibrant colors of the fish stood out against the backdrop of the coral reefs, their movements hypnotic and mesmerizing. The sun's rays filtered through the water, casting a golden glow on everything in its path. The light danced on the sea floor creating a magical, almost otherworldly ambiance that took Ryan's breath away. He felt as if he had entered another dimension, one where the laws of physics and reality were slightly altered. As Ryan lost himself in the underwater world, his senses were completely engulfed by the awe-inspiring scenes that unfolded before him. The coral reefs, in all their resplendent glory, had become the focal point of his attention and the schools of fish that swam past him appeared to dance with an ethereal tune. However, he had become oblivious to the predator that was inching closer to him from behind. A shadowy presence, lurking just beyond his periphery, stalked him with a silent grace, biding its time until it could strike. Ryan was utterly unaware of the imminent danger that was about to befall him. As if struck by a bolt of lightning, 
Ryan felt an excruciating pain jolt through his body. A sharp, searing sensation ripped through his left leg, and a muffled scream of agony escaped his lips. His heart raced with terrible realization as he recognized the source of his torment. A 13-foot tiger shark had clamped down on him with a ferocity that made his bones quake. Its powerful jaws, lined with razor-sharp teeth, ripped through his flesh with a frightening force. Ryan's mind raced as he struggled to comprehend the gravity of the situation. His worst nightmare had become a reality, and he was at the mercy of a fearsome predator, with no escape in sight. As the shark clamped its jaws down on Ryan's leg, its powerful muscles thrashed about, throwing him around like a toy in a fit of fury. The water turned a deep shade of crimson as Ryan's blood seeped out, mixing with the salt water. The sharp, serrated teeth of the tiger shark tore through his skin and muscle, causing unimaginable agony that shot through every nerve ending in his body. The pain was all-consuming, knocking out any other thoughts or sensations, and Ryan was left to endure the brutal assault of the predator in a world of pain and terror. Ryan tried to kick the shark repeatedly, but his efforts were futile against the shark's incredible strength. In one sickening crunch, the shark bit off Ryan's leg completely, severing it from his body with ruthless efficiency. As Ryan's muffled screams fell on the deaf ears of the ocean, the shark prepared to strike again, stalking its prey as it circled around him. Ryan's strength was waning, and his mangled leg was drowning him in pain. The shark lunged once more, its jaws gaping wide, ready to finish the job it had started. But this time, Ryan was prepared. Instinctively, he reached for the knife on his waist and plunged it into the shark's eye with all his might. The shark recoiled in pain, thrashing wildly in the water before retreating into the depths of the ocean. But Ryan's victory was short-lived. He was almost out of breath, his vision growing dim as he fought to stay conscious. As Ryan lost all hope, he saw a local diver approach him, a glimmer of hope in an otherwise hopeless situation. The diver managed to pull Ryan towards his boat, performing first aid as he called for rescue. Despite the diver's valiant efforts, Ryan's condition was critical. He drifted in and out of consciousness during the journey towards the hospital his fate hanging in the balance. It wasn't until two long, painful days later that Ryan finally woke up, his leg amputated to save his life. Though he had lost a limb, he had managed to survive the harrowing ordeal with the tiger shark, a testament to the human spirit's indomitable will to survive. Since he was a child, Anthony was captivated by the ocean's mesmerizing beauty and its fascinating inhabitants. Growing up, he dreamed of exploring the depths of the sea and discovering new species of marine life. As an avid scuba diver, he had traveled to many breathtaking locations across the globe, but the Bahamas spelled a special allure that always drew him back. The waters of the Bahamas were like a shimmering jewel, clear and inviting inviting him to dive in and explore. Anthony was mesmerized by the vibrant coral reefs that burst with colors and the schools of exotic fish that swam in synchronized motion. He had seen enormous manta rays with wingspans that seemed to stretch as far as the eye could see, and gentle nurse sharks gliding through the water with effortless grace. With each dive, Anthony felt he was entering a magical realm where he could escape the noise and chaos of the world above and immerse himself in a world of quiet wonder. The ocean floor was like an otherworldly landscape dotted with bizarre rock formations and coral towers that rose like spires towards the surface. Anthony felt like he was living in a dream as he swam through the crystal clear waters, taking in the stunning beauty of the ocean's depths. On a balmy day, the adventurous Anthony decided to embark on a journey to a secluded area of the island that he had never set foot on before. After renting scuba diving equipment, he dove into the emerald green waters that glistened under the sun's rays. As he descended, he felt the cool water engulf him, 
and he was immediately greeted by a school of tropical fish that swam playfully around him. Anthony was thrilled to explore this new world that lay beneath the surface, and he couldn't wait to discover the hidden gems that awaited him in this remote part of the island. The sunlit water was teeming with a kaleidoscope of vibrant sea creatures, all going about their business. Anthony was in awe of the ever-changing underwater scenery. He watched schools of neon-colored fish darting through the coral, while iridescent jellyfish drifted like slow-moving fireworks. Suddenly, a sinister silhouette appeared, a looming figure in the distance that sent chills down his spine. As the creature approached, he could see the distinctive stripes of the massive predator. It's a 14-foot-long tiger shark, and its eyes were fixed on Anthony. As Anthony gazed into the soulless eyes of the tiger shark, his heart pounded with fear. He felt the cold, inquisitive stare of the shark that had just appeared out of nowhere. Its powerful jaws moved with fluid grace as it circled him, a silent predator in search of its next meal. Anthony's mind raced as he realized the danger he was in. He tried to swim away, but the shark was too quick. Suddenly, the shark lunged forward and clamped its jaws around his leg. Anthony felt a searing pain and was dragged down into the depths of the ocean, struggling to break free. Despite the agonizing pain, Anthony refused to surrender to the jaws of the beast. He wielded his diving knife, lashing out with all his might, but it was futile. The shark's scales were impenetrable to the flimsy blade. With each chomp, the predator's serrated teeth tore through Anthony's flesh, causing him to scream in agony. As time passed, Anthony's strength waned, and the water around him grew crimson with his blood. He struggled to stay conscious as the predator continued to circle, its eyes fixated on his prey. Anthony knew that he needed to act fast before the shark launched its final attack, but with his limbs growing weaker by the second, it seemed that his fate was sealed. In his last-ditch effort to save himself, Anthony made a desperate move to reach the nearby rock formation. As he got closer, he saw the jagged edges of the rocks, feeling a sense of relief wash over him. But his hope was short-lived. The tiger shark quickly caught up to him, circling and thrashing in the water, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. With all his might, Anthony plunged his diving knife into the shark's eye, and the beast writhed in agony releasing its grip on him. With a gasp of air, Anthony broke through the surface of the water, but the struggle was far from over. He floated in the open water, desperately trying to signal for help, but no one came. The pain in his leg was agonizing, and he could feel himself slipping away, growing weaker by the second. The sun beat down mercilessly on him, and the salt water burned his wounds, adding to the agony. As time ticked by, his strength waned and his head grew heavy. Anthony knew that he was fighting a losing battle, and as the sun began to set, he prayed for a miracle. And then, with a final burst of energy, Anthony saw a boat in the distance. He waved his arms frantically, hoping that someone would see him, and they did. The boat raced towards him, and Anthony felt a wave of relief wash over him. He was going to make it after all. But it was not to be. As the boat drew closer, Anthony felt his body begin to shut down. He could feel his heart slowing down and his breath becoming shallower. He knew that he was dying. Anthony never made it to the hospital. His tragic story spread quickly throughout the local news, sending a shiver down the spines of all of those who had ever considered taking a dip in the ocean. It was a haunting reminder that despite the stunning beauty of the Bahamian waters, danger lurked beneath the surface. The unpredictable nature of wild animals was a force to be reckoned with, and even the most experienced divers were not immune to their attacks. Anthony's legacy would be one of caution and respect for the powerful creatures that call the ocean their home. Randall had always been a daring soul. 
seeking out the most exhilarating adventures. The thrill of scaling mountains, gliding through the air, and even conquering the world's highest peak had all been accomplished. However, now he yearned for the heart-pounding excitement of undersea exploration. After much research, Randall chose Mossel Bay, a place renowned for its vast population of great white sharks, to try his hand at shark cage diving. The idea of being submerged in a steel cage, teetering precariously on the ocean's surface while the colossal predator swam around, both fascinated and terrified him. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience that could go one of two ways, an unforgettable thrill or a terrifying disaster. The journey to Mossel Bay was long, but when Randall arrived, he was struck by its immense beauty. The cerulean waters of the ocean shimmered under the sun's rays. The coastline was a picturesque panorama of rocky cliffs and sandy beaches. The tranquil town was small, but it was clear that this place held great power, with the possibility of danger lurking just below the water's surface. Randall's excitement grew as he boarded the boat and set out towards the diving location. The cage was ready and waiting for him, and he couldn't wait to be lowered into the water. As the cage sank into the depths of the ocean, Randall's anticipation turned to fear. The water was murky, and he couldn't see far beyond the steel cage. The silence was deafening, and the only sound was the rhythmic breathing of the diving crew. Suddenly, a group of great white sharks began to circle the cage, their teeth glistening in the murky water as they attacked the steel pegs. Randall could feel his heart pounding in his chest as he watched them, wondering if the cage could withstand their attack. But as the sharks continued to circle, the cage remained sturdy, and Randall felt confident that nothing bad could happen. As the minutes ticked by, the tension grew palpable as the sharks kept circling the cage, their razor-sharp teeth bared in a menacing display. Randall and the crew felt a sense of relief when the sharks eventually stopped attacking the cage, only for their relief to quickly turn to confusion as they suddenly disappeared without a trace. In the murky waters, a thick layer of foam and bubbles made it difficult to see anything. But in the depths, Randall caught a glimpse of something that made his heart race with fear. A massive figure was moving towards the cage with deadly precision. It was coming fast, and there was nowhere to hide. As it approached, the figure became clearer, revealing itself to be a colossal great white shark. Its massive body dwarfed all other sharks they had seen before. Its scarred sides bore the evidence of countless battles, and its cold, dead eyes were fixed on the steel cage with an unerring focus. The crew and Randall watched in terror as the shark kept circling the cage, getting closer and closer with each pass. The atmosphere was thick with fear as they waited for what would happen next. The suspenseful silence was shattered when the shark disappeared suddenly into the depths of the ocean, leaving them all gasping for air. With the sudden appearance of the colossal great white shark, the crew of the diving expedition was thrown into a frenzy of fear and panic. They knew that they had to act quickly to save Randall's life. Without hesitation, they pulled on the rope that would lift the steel cage back to the surface. As they hauled it up, Randall could feel his heart pounding in his chest, and his body was shaking with fear. Just as he was about to breathe a sigh of relief, thinking he had made it out alive, the bottom of the cage was struck by a massive force. It felt like a powerful blow from a sledgehammer, and Randall was thrown off balance, his body jerking wildly in the water. He knew that something terrible was happening, and he could feel his fear growing with each passing moment. The sound of the impact was deafening, and Randall could feel his ears ringing. The water around him churned and frothed, and he knew that something was trying to break through the cage. His mind raced as he tried to imagine what kind of monster was capable of such a feat of strength. Randall's mind raced as he frantically scanned the murky waters, desperate to identify the source of the massive collision that had sent him hurtling out of the cage. 
Dread filled his heart as he suddenly realized that the colossal great white shark they had seen earlier was the culprit. Before he could even think of a way to defend himself, the beast launched itself like a torpedo, its razor-sharp teeth glistening in the water. In one swift and bone-chilling moment, the shark sunk its jaws into Randall's upper torso, tearing it away from his body with a violent snap. The sensation of excruciating pain mixed with utter terror as Randall felt his life slipping away in the jaws of the monstrous predator. The world around Randall seemed to vanish in an instant as he found himself trapped inside the jaws of the great white shark. The darkness was absolute, and the only sound he could hear was the deafening crunch of the shark's razor-sharp teeth slicing through his flesh and bones. The pain was indescribable, as if every inch of his body was being ripped apart by a thousand knives. His ribs were crushed under the pressure of the shark's jaws, and he knew in that moment that he was doomed. As the shark clenched its massive jaws on Randall's body, his lifeless form hung limply in the water, at the mercy of the animal's frenzied movements. With each violent thrash, the water churned with an ominous blend of swirling crimson and murky green. The shark's razor-sharp teeth shredded Randall's flesh, creating a gory, macabre display in the water. The predator's movements were so powerful that it dragged Randall's mangled remains down into the dark, abyssal depths of the ocean, far from the safety of the surface. It was a gruesome and unsettling sight, a grim reminder of the dangers that lurk beneath the waves. The attack was so sudden that the diving crew was not able to react accordingly. Randall's body was never found, and the story of the attack sent fear and terror to the diving community. It was a reminder that nature was unforgiving, and even the bravest and most experienced of thrill-seekers were not immune to its dangers. Juan had always known he was a man of the sea. Born and raised in Oslob Cebu, he was always drawn to the beauty and mystery of the ocean. He had been a shallow sea pearl diver for as long as he could remember and there was no place he would rather be than in the crystal clear waters that surrounded his home. Oslob was a small fishing village located on the southeastern coast of Cebu. It was a place of tranquil beauty, with the sparkling blue waters of the Bohol Sea stretching out as far as the eye could see. The village was nestled among verdant hills with white sandy beaches that were fringed by palm trees. The locals were friendly and welcoming, and the pace of life was slow and unhurried. It was a place of simple pleasures, where the sound of the waves and the scent of the sea air were enough to make Juan feel content. One warm afternoon, Juan was exploring the shallow waters, diving for pearls in its favorite spot. The sun danced on the surface, casting a mesmerizing play of light as Juan scanned the sandy seabed. As he reached out to pick up a particularly gleaming pearl, something caught his eye in his peripheral vision. With a sudden burst of speed, a massive figure was closing in on him. Juan's heart skipped a beat as he realized it was a bull shark, known for its aggressive nature and sharp teeth. Panic surged through him as he tried to swim away, but the shark was faster, closing the distance in a matter of seconds. Before Juan could react, the shark lunged at him, its jaw snapping shut around his arm. The pain was searing as the shark's razor-sharp teeth sank into his flesh drawing blood that mixed with the surrounding waters. Juan's mind raced as he struggled to break free, but the shark's grip was relentless. With a sickening crunch, the shark bit off Juan's arm, leaving him stunned and bleeding in the water. The once crystal clear sea turned crimson as blood billowed around him, clouding his vision. As the shark swam away with Juan's arm in his jaws, Juan was left stunned and reeling in shock. The pain was excruciating, and panic surged through him as he realized the severity of his injuries. With a sheer force of will, he managed to swim towards the surface, his remaining arm propelling him through the water. Just as Juan reached the surface, he gasped for air and looked around, hoping for a way out of this nightmare. 
but his heart sank as he noticed a massive fin in the distance, cutting through the water with menacing speed. His worst fears were coming true. The shark was coming back for him. With a growing sense of dread, Juan tried to swim away as fast as he could, but he knew it was futile. He was injured, bleeding, and vulnerable. The shark could smell his blood and was closing in fast. Juan knew what was about to happen, but he just couldn't do anything. Suddenly, a sharp pain shot through his left leg, and he let out a piercing scream. His scream echoed across the water, a call for help that went unanswered. The massive shark continued to sink its teeth deeper into Juan's flesh, but he refused to give up. He fought with all his might, summoning every ounce of strength and willpower that he had left. Juan kicked, punched, and thrashed about in a desperate attempt to free himself from the shark's grip. The pain was unbearable, but Juan refused to let the shark be the end of him. As the shark relentlessly attacked Juan, a sense of doom set in. He wondered if this is how it was going to end, his lifeless body sinking to the bottom of the ocean, consumed by a predator. But the will to survive coursed through Juan's veins, fueling him to keep fighting. He could feel the rush of adrenaline pulsing through his body, giving him a temporary boost of strength. Despite his valiant efforts, Juan's screams for help went unheard. He was on his own or so he thought. In a stroke of good fortune, the commotion caused by Juan's struggle caught the attention of a local who was patrolling the area on his boat. The local, hearing Juan's cries for help, quickly assessed the situation and took immediate action. He grabbed his spear gun and dove into the water, ready to face the rampaging bull shark. The local, using all his skills and experience, aimed his spear gun at the shark's eyes and snout. The shock and pain of the hit made the shark swim away, releasing Juan from his grip. Juan, now half alive and sinking in the water, was still in danger, but he wasn't alone anymore. Without hesitation, the local swam across the water to retrieve Juan. Together, they emerged from the water, shaken but alive, their lives forever linked by this harrowing experience. Juan was whisked away to the nearest hospital his body still throbbing with pain from the brutal attack. The doctors and nurses worked tirelessly to stabilize him, rushing him into the operating room for a life-saving procedure. Despite the ordeal, Juan's tenacity had paid off. He was alive. When Juan woke up, he was met with a flurry of emotions. He was relieved to still be breathing, but the reality of losing his right arm and left leg hit him hard. It was a difficult adjustment, but Juan was surrounded by the unwavering support of his family and friends. They rallied by his side, providing comfort, encouragement, and love during his recovery. Their presence was a constant reminder of how precious life truly was. Pedro and Owen's friendship was unbreakable, fueled by their shared thirst for adventure. Owen was beyond thrilled when Pedro asked him to visit his hometown of Guadalupe Island in Mexico for an introduction to scuba diving. With Pedro as his mentor, Owen was confident he would make the most of his diving experience, even though he had never felt the rush of being underwater before. Pedro's expertise was reassuring, and Owen felt excited to take on the challenge. Guadalupe Island was a breathtaking place a seemingly tranquil oasis surrounded by the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean. The water was so clear that it reflected the blue sky above like a mirror, revealing an underwater world full of wonder and danger. Beneath the surface, the coral reefs were a maze of colors, from bright greens to deep blues, dotted with exotic sea creatures that could take one's breath away. The currents were strong and unpredictable and the waves crashed against the rocky shores with a thunderous force that could be heard from miles away. Owen was mesmerized by the beauty of the island, but he also felt a sense of unease in his gut, as if the ocean was warning him of the impending danger that lurked beneath the waves. Pedro, on the other hand, was filled with pride as he led his friend through the island's stunning landscapes, showing off the secrets and mysteries that only the locals knew. As the night fell on Guadalupe Island, Pedro and Owen joined the locals in a lively celebration. 
They drank, laughed, and listened to the island's music, feeling welcomed by their friendly community. However, as the drinks kept flowing, the locals began to share chilling stories of recent shark attacks on fishermen who dared venture too far from the shore. Owen's unease grew with each story, but Pedro seemed unfazed, assuring his friend that he knew these waters well and that sharks wouldn't be a problem. Yet the tales of terror lingered in Owen's mind, and the thought of facing these predators in the deep, dark waters of the Pacific Ocean filled him with dread. The following day, Pedro and Owen plunged into the vast ocean surrounding the island, their senses alive with a thrill of adventure. The vibrant underwater world was a feast for their eyes as they swam alongside colorful schools of fish and majestic sea turtles. The waters were so clear that they could see for miles, but the clarity also made it easier for Owen to spot something sinister lurking in the shadows. His heart racing, he saw two enormous great white sharks silently gliding towards them, their razor-sharp teeth glinting menacingly in the sunlight. Owen signaled Pedro frantically, pointing at the two great white sharks that glided with an ominous grace through the clear blue water. Pedro motioned for Owen to follow him, a confident smile on his face as he swam towards the creatures. Owen felt a chill run down his spine as he realized how close they were getting. Suddenly, the sharks seemed to sense their presence, and their behavior changed. They began to move in erratic patterns, as if agitated by the two divers invading their territory. With their heart racing and adrenaline pumping, Pedro and Owen tried to retreat as fast as they could from the agitated sharks but it seemed like the predators had other plans in store. Suddenly, one of the sharks broke away from the group and charged towards Pedro like a missile, the force of the impact sending him spinning out of control. The sickening crack of bones echoed through the water as the shark slammed into Pedro's back, leaving him paralyzed and at the mercy of the ocean's currents. As the water swallowed him whole, Pedro's life hung in the balance. Pedro was helpless as the second shark made its move. Its mouth gaped wide open, and Owen could see the rows of jagged teeth as the shark charged towards Pedro. The shark lunged at Pedro with incredible speed, and Owen could hear the bone-crunching impact as it sunk its teeth deep into Pedro's shoulder. Blood gushed out from the wound as the first shark joined in, biting down on Pedro's leg with relentless force. The two beasts pulled in opposite directions, tearing through Pedro's flesh and bones like a pair of ferocious machines. The sound of snapping bones echoed through the water as the sharks ripped off Pedro's limbs, leaving behind a cloud of blood and dismembered body parts. Pedro's body convulsed in agony as the great white sharks mercilessly tore into his flesh. Piercing pain consumed him, and he realized his life was slipping away. He felt the cold embrace of the ocean as his body continued to freefall, the only sound the deafening roar of bubbles escaping his regulator. The water around him became a swirling vortex of red as the sharks ferociously ripped apart his body, leaving behind only scraps of torn flesh and blood-stained water. The scene of horror unfolded before Owen's eyes, and he was powerless to stop it. The two sharks were like monstrous predators, unrelenting and savage as they tore apart Pedro's body. Owen was rooted to the spot, frozen in terror at the sight of his friend's brutal demise. Eventually, he regained some semblance of control and began to swim away, his heart pounding in his chest. He could feel the shark's presence behind him, a dark and ominous force lurking in the depths of the ocean. Owen swam with all his might, trying to outrun the looming danger that pursued him. Owen was in shock, and he kept crying while informing the local islanders about the incident. The local authorities acted and tried to retrieve Pedro's remains, but to no avail. The only sign of the shark attacks was the crimson-tinged water surrounding the area. Owen was traumatized by the events that unfolded before him, haunted by the memory of his friend being torn apart by the sharks. He vowed never to dive again and warned others of the dangers of underestimating the power of nature's creatures. The waves relentlessly pounded the shoreline of the secluded Caribbean beach, producing a rhythmic melody that seemed to call out to the young travelers. 
The sun's waning light cast a shimmering golden hue across the ocean's horizon, illuminating the restless waves as they crashed against the shore. The travelers had been warned of the bull sharks that swam in these waters, but they paid no heed to the rumors. They were fearless and driven by the promise of an adventure that would be etched in their memories forever. The thrill of the unknown was a siren's call, luring them towards the ocean's edge. Their hearts pounded excitedly, and nothing could deter them from pursuing excitement and danger. Within the group's adventurers, there was a young woman named Emily. Her carefree and impulsive nature made her a favorite among the group. Emily lived for the thrill of the moment and was always eager to show off her bravery. She embodied risk-taking, often going to great lengths to impress her friends. As the group set up camp, Emily's thoughts immediately turned to the vast expanse of the ocean, and she felt an irresistible urge to dive in. The anticipation of the unknown filled Emily's heart as she made her way to the water's edge. The cool Caribbean breeze played with her hair, and the salty scent of the ocean filled her nostrils. The waves gently lapped at her toes, beckoning her to dive into their depths. Emily's heart raced excitedly as she took her first steps into the ocean. The warm water engulfing her body was exhilarating, and she felt truly alive. Emily's heart raced as she swam further out to the ocean. She felt invincible, as if nothing could stop her. But as she gazed down into the depths below, she noticed a group of dark shadows gliding gracefully through the water. The shape of their fins and the cold, dead eyes staring back at her made her heart beat. It took a moment for her to realize what they were, but as they drew closer, she knew the truth. Bull sharks. The rumors she had heard about these deadly predators came flooding back to her, but instead of fear, Emily felt a sense of fascination. She had never seen a bull shark before, and the adrenaline rush of the moment drove her closer to the pack. The glint of their razor-sharp teeth was mesmerizing, and she couldn't resist the urge to get closer. Emily's hand trembled as she reached for her phone, the desire to capture the perfect shot taking over her. With the bull shark swimming so close, it would be the perfect opportunity to impress her friends with a breathtaking picture. She tried to steady her breathing, careful not to startle the sharks, as she extended her arm to take the photo. But little did she know that she was putting herself in grave danger. Emily's body went rigid as the shark suddenly lunged towards her. She could feel the force of the water as the predator rapidly closed in its jaws agape and revealing rows of razor-sharp teeth. Panic surged through Emily's veins, and she held her breath, not daring to move. Emily's fascination quickly turned to terror as the bull shark circled around her. She could see every detail of its body, the rough, gray skin, the powerful tail propelling it forward, the rows of teeth waiting to tear her apart. Despite her fear, she couldn't help but feel a strange sense of wonder at the creature's beauty. But that feeling quickly dissipated as she realized the danger she was in. Emily's heart raced as the bull shark pack closed on her. She could feel their hot breath on her skin and smell the metallic scent of blood and sea salt. Their dark, unblinking eyes locked on hers, and she knew she was in trouble. She kicked her legs frantically, trying to swim away, but the sharks were too fast. They circled around her, their fins cutting through the water rapidly. Emily's mind raced as she struggled to devise a plan, but her thoughts were jumbled and panicked. She could feel the water churn around her as the sharks closed in for the kill. As Emily struggled to escape the impending attack, her screams echoed across the deserted beach. Her heart pounded in her chest, and her lungs burned as she gasped for air. The sharks had clamped onto her limbs, pulling her down with each passing moment. Emily could feel the rough texture of their skin against her skin, and the searing pain of their teeth sinking into her flesh. The salt water stung her eyes, making it difficult to see as she fought for her life. As the sharks pulled her deeper into the ocean, Emily realized the gravity of the situation. 
she was surrounded by these relentless predators, and no one was around to save her. Her friends on the shore heard her cries and rushed to the water's edge. They could see the sharks circling, their fins cutting through the water. They called out to Emily, but there was no response. The water turned red with blood as the sharks ripped her apart. The group was in shock. They had never seen anything like it before. They called the Coast Guard who arrived shortly after. The sharks had disappeared into the depths, leaving behind only a trail of blood. The Coast Guard searched for hours, but could not find Emily's body. The rest of the travelers were traumatized by the incident. They had come to the Caribbean looking for adventure, but found something far more terrifying. They vowed never to take unnecessary risk again, realizing that the ocean is dangerous. Matthew and Gina's shared love for marine life started when they were kids exploring their hometown beaches. They spent hours waiting in the waves, chasing after starfish, crabs, and dreaming of the underwater world. As they grew older, their passion for the ocean deepened and they turned their hobby into a profession. Together, they created a YouTube channel dedicated to wildlife documentaries, specializing in sharks. Their unique videos showcased the lives of these creatures and dispelled many of the myths and misconceptions that surrounded them. They braved dangerous waters and weather to capture stunning footage that left viewers spellbound. Behind the camera, Matthew and Gina were not only colleagues, but also lifelong best friends with a deep respect for the ocean and its inhabitants. That's why when their YouTube channel hit 1 million subscribers, Matthew and Gina were over the moon. They had come a long way since starting their wildlife documentaries together and wanted to celebrate with their loyal viewers. To show their gratitude, they decided to let their followers choose the topic for their next documentary. They set up a poll and asked viewers to vote for the wildlife they wanted to see next. The poll results were in, and the winner was the bull sharks of the Zambezi River in Mozambique. The duo packed their bags and headed to Mozambique, where they met up with their local guide, who would take them to the best spots to film the bull sharks. They spent several days on the river, getting up early in the morning to catch the sharks feeding, and staying out late at night to capture their nocturnal habits. The three days of the shoot had been nothing short of amazing. Matthew and Gina had captured some incredible footage of the bull sharks in the Zambezi River, showcasing their strength, speed, and grace. But there was something that had been nagging at Matthew ever since they arrived. Despite bull sharks being known to be solitary hunters, many of the sharks they observed were hunting in groups, coordinating their attacks, and sharing their prey. This was an unusual phenomenon, and Matthew couldn't help but wonder why this was happening. As he pondered this mystery, Gina simply shrugged it off, saying that it was just a coincidence. But Matthew knew there was more to it than that. He could sense it in the way the sharks moved, the way they communicated with each other, and the way they worked together to take down their prey. On the fourth day of their expedition along the river, while Gina and Matthew were busy filming at the mouth of the river, Gina's sharp eyes caught a glimpse of a bull shark going about its hunting routine, unperturbed by their presence. Gina signaled Matthew to join her in getting a better shot of the magnificent creature, but he urged her to leave the shark alone and exit the water. Gina, entranced by the shark's sleek movements, ignored his warnings and persisted in tracking the predator, unaware of the lurking danger nearby. Only when it was too late did she realize she had become the target of another apex predator. Dread washed over Gina as she faced a colossal 13-foot bull shark with lifeless eyes, realizing she was the hunted, not the hunter. Time stood still as she grappled with shock, her heart pounding in her chest as she tried to make sense of the situation. With lightning speed, the bull shark lunged at Gina, sinking its teeth into her neck. The sheer force of the attack was overwhelming and Gina felt the crunch of bones as the shark's serrated teeth tore through her flesh. Blood gushed out of her carotid arteries, staining the once murky waters a horrifying shade of crimson red. Gina's body went into shock as she desperately tried to fend off the relentless predator, but her strength faded quickly. 
The pain in her grievous wound was unbearable, and the shark's thrashing only worsened the damage. Gina could feel her life draining away, her vision growing hazy as the world around her blurred into darkness. It was a harrowing and tragic end to what was supposed to be an ordinary day of filming. Matthew stood frozen in terror as he watched the horrific scene unfold before him. He couldn't move, couldn't bring himself to intervene as the bull shark continued to maul his best friend Gina to death. The sight was gut-wrenching, and Matthew felt a sense of helplessness wash over him. But the horror didn't end there. To Matthew's horror, he saw other bull sharks converging on the gruesome scene. They were drawn by the scent of blood in the water, and they were closing in fast. Matthew realized with a sinking feeling that Gina's brutal fate was not over yet. One particularly large bull shark, measured around 10 feet in length, charged towards Gina and bit her leg clean off her body. The shark swiftly grabbed its prize and disappeared into the depths of the water, leaving a trail of blood in its wake. The other bull sharks wasted no time in joining the feeding frenzy. They tore into Gina's lifeless, mangled body, ripping off her arms, legs, and head with vicious ferocity. The water turned a sickening shade of red as Gina's blood mixed with the surrounding currents. Matthew could hardly believe what he was witnessing. Within moments, nothing was left of Gina. Her body had been reduced to a gory mess devoured by the hungry bull sharks. Once Matthew realized that his friend Gina was gone, he snapped out of his shock and realized that he needed to get out of the water before he became the next target. His body was filled with adrenaline and fear as he swam fast as he could, his arms and legs pumping furiously through the water. He had never swum so fast in his life. He pushed himself to the brink as he felt his muscles burning while swimming. Looking back, he saw a fin approaching, and he swam even faster, gritting his teeth to reach the shore. Collapsing under the sand, he cried uncontrollably. This woman, his best friend, was ripped apart by a pack of bull sharks, and he couldn't do anything to save her. Matthew survived the ordeal, but the emotional and psychological trauma of that incident will stay with him for the rest of his life. As Mary submerged herself in the crystal clear waters of Ningaloo Reef, Australia, her wetsuit hugged her body tightly, making her feel as if she was part of the ocean herself. With her hair floating around her, she swam with effortless elegance through the vibrant blue world that surrounded her. Her eyes shone with excitement as she took in the breathtaking scenery that lay beneath her. She had spent countless hours studying the intricate ecosystem of the reef, from the colorful coral to the dazzling schools of fish that swam by. And as she explored this mesmerizing underwater wonderland once again, she was filled with awe at the intricate balance of life that existed there. Each time she plunged into the depths of the reef, Mary felt like she was stepping into a magical realm where the beauty and harmony of nature never ceased to amaze her. Ningalo Reef was a coral paradise with its stunning array of corals in all shapes and sizes, creating a kaleidoscope of colors that seemed almost otherworldly. Mary had dedicated her life to understanding these complex ecosystems and their inhabitants. She had traveled the world, but Ningalo Reef held a special place in her heart. It was her laboratory, her playground, and her sanctuary. Mary was an accomplished coral reef biologist known for her meticulous research and unwavering passion for marine conservation. She had made significant contributions to the field of marine science and was respected by her peers for her expertise and dedication. Her love for the ocean and its creatures was infectious, and she had a deep sense of responsibility to protect and preserve these fragile ecosystems for future generations. As Mary descended further into the depths of the reef, She marveled at the sheer size of some of the coral formations. They were unlike anything she'd ever seen before, and she eagerly began documenting her findings. She swam gracefully, her movements fluid and precise, as she observed the intricate symbiotic relationships between the corals and the myriad of marine life that called this reef home. 
As Mary focused her gaze on the majestic coral formation, a sense of calm and wonder enveloped her. She marveled at its intricate patterns and vivid colors, feeling like she'd uncovered a hidden treasure in the depths of the sea. But then something changed. A prickling sensation crawled up her spine, making her turn around abruptly. Her eyes widened in horror as she spotted a massive, ominous figure emerging from the shadows. Its body was massive, its movements deliberate and calculated. Mary's heart raced as she realized that she was face to face with one of the ocean's greatest predators. The creature's cold, unblinking eyes locked onto hers, and for a moment, Mary was frozen with fear. As Mary's eyes adjusted to the shadowy figure, a wave of fear washed over her. Her heart pounded in her chest as she recognized the unmistakable shape of a 13-foot tiger shark, a predator that could easily overpower her with its muscular body and razor-sharp teeth. The water around her seemed to grow colder as the shark circled her, its menacing gaze never leaving her vulnerable form. Mary's muscles tensed as she remembered her extensive training knowing that every second counted in this deadly game of survival. With trembling hands, she reached for the knife strapped to her thigh, her fingers fumbling for a moment before finally closing around the hilt. She held the weapon tightly, ready to strike at a moment's notice, her eyes scanning the dark waters for any signs of the shark's next move. The tension was palpable as she waited for the inevitable attack, her heart racing with the knowledge that her life was in mortal danger. The tiger shark surged towards Mary with astonishing speed, its massive jaws opening wide, revealing row upon row of razor-sharp teeth. She reacted with lightning reflexes, slashing at the shark with her knife, aiming for its sides in a desperate attempt to fend off the imminent attack. But the predator seemed relentless, undeterred by her efforts. Its powerful muscles propelled it forward, and in a split second, Mary felt searing pain as the shark's jaws closed around her right arm. She screamed, her mind reeling in shock as she watched in horror as her limb was torn off in a brutal bone-crunching snap. Blood clouded the water, and Mary's body convulsed in agony as she struggled to comprehend the nightmare unfolding before her. Mary's mind raced as she fought to stay calm. She knew she had to get to the surface and get help, but the shark was relentless. It circled her, its cold eyes fixed on her remaining limbs. With all her strength, Mary tried to swim towards the surface, but the shark was faster. It lunged at her, latching on to one of her legs. Mary kicked with all her might, using her free leg to try and fend off the shark, but it was too powerful. It thrashed and ragdolled her under the water, the surrounding water turning dark red with her blood and pieces of flesh from the brutal attack. Mary's screams were muffled by the water as she fought for her life, but the shark was relentless. With one loud crunch, the shark bit off Mary's leg, leaving her defenseless and fading fast. She felt the pain and despair wash over her as she struggled to stay conscious. The shark circled her once more before it lunged at her this time going for her neck and head. Mary felt the unbearable pain as her flesh ripped apart. And then, everything went dark. Days passed, and reports of Mary's disappearance surfaced. The authorities searched the area, but no body was found. The news assumed that she was devoured by sharks frequenting the area. Mary's family was devastated by the news, and they mourned her loss. The incident served as a stark reminder of the dangers that lurk beneath the waters, even in the most beautiful of places. Mary's legacy lived on, and her research continued to inspire generations of marine biologists. Her death was a tragic loss, but her memory would always be treasured by those who knew and loved her. Harvey and his crew had been shark hunters for years. They had seen it all, great whites, hammerheads, tiger sharks, and more. But when they got the call about a series of shark attacks in Volusia County, Florida, they knew that this was going to be their toughest assignment yet. Five people had been injured and maimed, 
and one person was still missing. Harvey and his crew knew they had to act fast. Upon reaching the scene, they were surprised to find that many beachgoers were still present, despite the news of recent shark attacks. Harvey and his team realized that these individuals were in danger and needed protection from further harm. The team quickly got to work, implementing measures to safeguard the people on the beach. With their primary focus being the safety of the beachgoers, Harvey and his crew wasted no time in initiating their mission. They began to patrol the shoreline and the surrounding waters, scanning the area with utmost vigilance for any signs of danger. The crew was well aware of the threats posed by great whites, which were known to frequent those waters. As such, they maintained a state of high alert and exercised extreme caution. The team was equipped with the latest technology and tools to detect and track any movement in the water allowing them to react promptly in case of any shark sightings. In the midst of their vigilant patrol, the crew was caught off guard when a colossal creature forcefully collided with their boat, jolting everyone on board. Tony, one of the seasoned crew members, was caught off balance and was inadvertently knocked overboard, plunging into the water below. As the crew frantically rushed to Tony's aid, their hearts pounded with fear and urgency. They scanned the waters for any sign of Tony's whereabouts, but before they could react, a 20-foot great white shark emerged from beneath the surface with lightning speed. With jaws wide open, the shark lunged at Tony, clamping its razor-sharp teeth onto his body. The crew's worst fears became a horrifying reality as Tony was dragged under the water by the powerful shark. The surface of the water turned crimson with blood, a stark and chilling reminder of the perilous situation. The crew's hearts pounded with fear as they watched their comrade Tony struggle in the jaws of the great white shark. Without a moment's hesitation, Harvey and the other crew members sprang into action, diving into the water and racing to Tony's rescue. The water was murky and the shark's movements were unpredictable, making the situation all the more dangerous. As they drew closer, they could hear Tony's desperate thrashing as he fought for his life. Harvey and the crew felt a mix of emotions, fear, determination, and an overwhelming sense of responsibility to protect their friend. Adrenaline was pumping through their veins as they approached the terrifying predator. The crew's spear guns were their weapons of choice, and they wielded them with skill and precision. As they closed in on the shark, Harvey and his crew members started firing their spears with lines attached to the boat. One spear managed to latch onto the belly of the Great White but it didn't seem to be enough to stop the ferocious predator. Harvey knew that they needed to act fast and decisively to save Tony's life. With no regard for his own safety, he boldly approached the shark, brandishing his knife. The shark lunged towards him, its massive jaws gaping open, ready to strike. Harvey, undeterred, jabbed at the shark repeatedly, aiming for its sensitive nose. The shark thrashed and writhed, lashing out at Harvey with its razor-sharp teeth. But Harvey was relentless, continuing to stab the shark until it finally succumbed to its injuries and went limp. The crew watched in awe as the once terrifying predator floated lifelessly in the water, defeated by their courage and skill. With the shark no longer a threat, the crew turned their attention to Tony, who was battered and bruised, but alive. They pulled him to safety, relieved and grateful that they had been able to rescue him from the jaws of death. But Harvey and his crew knew their work was not done yet. They needed to understand why this particular shark had been attacking beachgoers, and if it had done so before. With determination in their eyes, the crew hauled the lifeless shark onto the beach, its massive body leaving a trail in the sand. They began to examine the shark carefully slicing it open to reveal its insides. As they made their way through the layers of skin and muscle, a putrid smell emanated from the belly of the beast. Without warning, a concoction of viscous fluid spilled forth from the shark's stomach, causing the crew to recoil in shock and disgust as the decapitated head of the missing person rolled out into the sand. The realization that the man's body had been consumed by the enormous predator left the crew stunned and appalled. Recognizing the significance of this discovery, the team knew they had to press on with their examination, 
aware that there could be further clues lurking within the shark's belly. With steady hands and a sense of grim determination, Harvey and his crew continued the examination. They retrieved other body parts of humans from the shark's stomach, confirming their worst fears that this particular shark had been responsible for their recent attacks on beachgoers. As they worked, they couldn't help but feel a sense of grief for the victims and anger towards the shark that had caused so much pain and suffering. But they also knew that they had prevented more attacks and potentially saved countless lives by stopping the shark's reign of terror. Despite the harrowing incident, Tony was able to escape death, although he had lost one of his arms. Harvey and his crew continued their work as shark hunters, but this experience had changed them forever. They knew that they had to respect the power of these creatures and work to protect both humans and sharks alike. It was a lesson they would never forget. Melissa's colleagues at the marketing firm had often wondered if she was a machine. Her unparalleled work ethic, unrelenting passion, and unwavering commitment had earned her the reputation of being the hardest worker in the company. Her persistence and determination had finally paid off when she received a promotion, but it was not enough to keep her from feeling burnout. As the hustle and bustle of the city began to take its toll on her, Melissa craved an escape to a place where she could find solace and rejuvenation. She decided to take her whole family to the island of Maui in Hawaii, a place known for its idyllic beaches and tranquil waters. The idea of exploring the stunning coastline and indulging in water activities was enough to invigorate her soul. Melissa's family was a diverse and dynamic group, with each member having their own unique traits and personalities. Her parents, who had retired after years of hard work, were a happy couple, enjoying the peace and serenity that life after work provided. Melissa's younger brother, on the other hand, was a self-proclaimed daredevil, always seeking new adventures and taking risks that most would avoid. Her younger sister was the baby of the family, looking up to Melissa as an inspiration and role model. She was eager to follow in her big sister's footsteps, always watching her every move and admiring her accomplishments with an air of awe and wonder. Despite their differences, the family loved and supported each other, ready to face any challenge that came their way. The island of Maui was a tropical haven that welcomed Melissa's family with open arms. The turquoise waters glimmered in the sunlight, and the white sandy beaches stretched for miles, inviting them to explore. The constant murmur of the waves crashing against the shore provided a soothing soundtrack to their adventures, while the soft sand tickled their toes. But beneath the idyllic scenery lay a world of danger, and it was only a matter of time before they would find themselves entangled in its grasp. As the sun began to set, Melissa and her family sat down at a beachside bar to enjoy a drink and soak up the island's ambiance. A friendly local overheard their conversation and offered a suggestion that would change their vacation forever. The local recommended that they explore the Molokini Crater, a dormant undersea volcanic crater. Intrigued, Melissa and her family eagerly inquired for more details about the location. The local described it as a magnificent wonder of nature, with an abundance of marine life and underwater caves waiting to be explored. As the group imagined themselves diving into the clear blue water of the crater, they felt a sense of excitement and apprehension. They had never attempted anything like this before, and the unknown dangers lurking beneath the surface added to the thrill. The idea of venturing into a crater formed by a volcano that had been active in the past made their hearts race. Despite their hesitation, they decided to take the plunge and embark on this new adventure. On the day of the dive, the family was bubbling with excitement as they strapped on their diving gear and jumped into the cool, clear water surrounding Molokini Crater. The vibrant colors of the coral reef below were mesmerizing, and the family couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder and awe at the otherworldly beauty before them. Schools of brightly colored fish swam around them, while majestic sea turtles glided gracefully by. The eerie silence of the underwater world only added to the sense of mystery and adventure that Melissa and her family felt. But as they delved deeper into the crater, 
a feeling of unease began to settle in the pit of their stomachs. However, while swimming, Melissa noticed a group of large shadows lurking in the murky waters. Curious, she used her underwater flashlight to shine a light on the shadows. Melissa was petrified to see a pack of tiger sharks stalking the murky waters. In a panic, Melissa swam to the surface and alerted her whole family. The family were in a frenzy, thrashing relentlessly with their efforts to reach the safety of the waiting boat. The chaos caught the attention of the sharks. The pack of sharks swam towards the commotion. Realizing that there's prey in the water, the predators went on a feeding frenzy. The rest of the family were almost upon the boat, but Melissa was not so lucky. In a matter of seconds, she was surrounded and circled around by a pack of hungry tiger sharks. Melissa could see the fins of five sharks circling around her. She tried to swim away as fast as she could, but the sharks were faster. Suddenly, one of the predators lunged at her, biting Melissa's left leg. Melissa screamed in agony as she felt the shark's razor-sharp teeth tear her flesh. The water around them was crimson red with Melissa's blood mixing with the salt water. The smell of the blood in the water crazed the other sharks, who were overcome with their primal instincts and hunger. The other sharks started attacking Melissa, who was helpless against the might of the predatory beast of the sea. As the first shark latched on a Melissa's leg, tossing her around like a rag doll in the water, one shark latched onto Melissa's arm. Suddenly, in a bone-crunching bite, both sharks bit off Melissa's limbs. Melissa couldn't even scream, as another shark bit off her head. The sharks continued their harrowing attack. Some sharks began ripping the other limbs, while one bit on Melissa's torso, dragging her mangled, lifeless body to the depths of the ocean. Melissa's family could only watch in horror as this pack of tiger sharks ripped her apart. The Coast Guard responded to the distress call of the guide, but it was no use. After several days of search, no part of Melissa was found. Her family was left with the emotional scar of watching their beloved Melissa devoured by the primal predators of the sea. Lisa's eyes sparkled with a sense of adventure as she gazed upon the magnificent waters of the Great Barrier Reef. Her heart raced with excitement and a hint of fear, but the burning desire to tick off scuba diving in the world-famous reef from her bucket list was stronger than her nerves. She couldn't wait to take the plunge into the unknown depths below. She eagerly donned her black wetsuit, feeling the soft fabric hug her body like a second skin ready to take on the waters. The oxygen tank felt heavy on her back, but it was a welcome weight, a symbol of the adventure she was about to embark on. As she adjusted her mask and regulator, her senses were heightened with anticipation. She felt as if she was about to enter a whole new world, a world filled with unknown creatures and unimaginable beauty. Lisa felt as though she was venturing into an uncharted universe as she sank into the depths of the ocean. Alien-like creatures surrounded her, flaunting their striking colors and unusual forms, as if they were plucked from the pages of a science fiction novel. Bright and vivid fish raced past her in flashes of neon, their scales gleaming in the sun's warm rays. In mesmerizing patterns, schools of silver fish swirled around her, as if in a trance, like a rhythmic and hypnotic dance. The beauty of the underwater world faded as Lisa's eyes fixated on a looming figure in the distance. It seemed to be emerging from the shadows of the murky depths, revealing its massive size. Her heart pounded in her chest as her breaths came in short, panicked gasps as she recognized the predator in front of her. A sense of dread washed over her as she could feel the hairs on the back of her neck stand on end. It was a tiger shark easily measuring over 20 feet long, and its sleek body moved through the water with a graceful yet intimidating power. Lisa's mind raced as she tried to remember the guide's instructions on how to avoid attracting sharks, but her mind went on panic. Terror gripped Lisa as she frantically kicked her legs, feeling the weight of the ocean pressing down on her. 
She could feel her heart pounding in her chest, threatening to burst out of her ribcage as she struggled to gain some distance from the approaching creature. But her movements only seemed to incite the beast, causing it to move faster and closer towards her. Its powerful body sliced through the water, sending ripples across the surface as it moved with deadly intent. Lisa could feel the hairs on the back of her neck stand up as she realized that she was face to face with one of the ocean's most fearsome predators. Despite the guide's reassurances, Lisa could feel the weight of her fear pressing down on her chest like an anchor, dragging her deeper into the abyss of terror. Her heart pounded in her ears as she made her way towards the boat, her movements frantic and uncoordinated, like a panicked prey desperately trying to escape the predator's grasp. But her attempts to flee only seemed to draw the massive shark closer, its fins slicing through the surface of the water as it circled around her like a vulture circling its prey. The other divers froze in terror, their faces etched with horror as they watched the deadly dance between Lisa and the shark. Despite the guide's warning, Lisa's panic had already taken over. Her splashing movements had attracted the lurking predator towards her, and the shark was closing in. Its sleek gray body glided through the water with ease, its dark, lifeless eyes fixed on Lisa. Suddenly, the shark lunged at Lisa. The sound of teeth crunching through bone echoed in her ears as the massive tiger shark clamped down on her left leg. She felt the searing pain shoot through her body, and she let out a blood-curdling scream. The shark's teeth sliced through her flesh like a hot knife through butter, leaving a gaping wound that gushed blood into the ocean. Lisa felt her consciousness slipping away as the pain became too much to bear. Her vision blurred, and she struggled to stay awake. But eventually succumbed to the darkness. The guide's heart raced with adrenaline as he saw Lisa's body sinking rapidly into the abyss. With a burst of energy, he kicked his way towards her, determined to save her. But as he reached her, a sudden chill ran down his spine. From the murky depths emerged the same tiger shark, its massive jaws wide open, ready to strike again. The guide's heart pounded in his chest as he watched in horror as the shark bit off Lisa's other leg in a single swift motion. The guide's blood ran cold as he watched in horror as the massive tiger shark ripped off Lisa's limbs one after another, leaving her helpless and mutilated in its wake. He was frozen in fear, unable to process what was happening before his very eyes. The shark's powerful jaws snapped and tore at her flesh, its razor-sharp teeth sinking deep into her body, causing blood to cloud the water. As Lisa's body was being torn apart, the guide felt a sickening feeling in the pit of his stomach, knowing that he had failed to protect her. His mind raced with thoughts of what he could have done differently, but it was too late. The shark, having taken its fill, grabbed Lisa's lifeless carcass and dragged it down to the murky depths of the ocean, leaving the guide in a state of shock and disbelief. He felt helpless, his mind numb as he tried to process the tragedy that had just unfolded before him. The other tourists and members of the diving crew frantically reached out to the authorities, their voices trembling as they recounted the gruesome attack. The authorities quickly dispatched a team of search and rescue divers to scour the surrounding waters, their powerful flashlights cutting through the murky depths like blades. But as they searched and searched, the bleak reality began to set in. There was no hope in finding Lisa alive. After two days of searching, all that was found was Lisa's oxygen tank with scratch and bite marks on its sides. The incident served as a haunting reminder of the unpredictable nature of apex predators and the dangers that lay hidden beneath the tranquil waters of the Great Barrier 